All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what surface micromachining means. Okay, so surface micromachining is a term used um, when you're discussing how to make, for example, a comb drive or an accelerometer or a cantilever using semiconductor processing methods semiconductor processing methods and the most common one is the CMOS process okay CMOS stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductors but really what that means is it's a standard way of making computer chips more or less standard everybody uses different versions of the process but it's a layering process okay so what you might be doing Okay, you, um, you start with a, a silicon substrate, right? We like to use silicon for about 99% of everything we make on this planet. That's dealing with microelectronics or microsystems. So this is, uh, this is a, the first layer, right? This is what we call our substrate. We're going to build on this. And this is crystalline silicon. Okay, this represents crystalline silicon. Okay, it's really flat. I can't draw very flat today because I, my finger is not flat. Um, but it's a layering process. So maybe the first layer we put in could be something like um, silicon nitride. Okay. So the white stuff, the crystalline stuff, might be 600 microns thick. The yellow stuff, or the silicon nitride in this case, you know, might only be one micron thick or half a micron thick. So I'm not drawing this to scale. <coughs> okay? It's a cartoon. It's a schematic. It's a way of showing something to get you the idea of what's going on. All right? So we put some silicon nitride down, and then we say, okay... Let's put some polycrystalline silicon, right? We're going to do polymumps. So this will be sort of like the polymumps process. So we're going to put a layer of polysilicon down. Polycrystalline silicon. We say poly for short. When I was at Texas Instruments and I first started working there, I was in charge of polycritical dimensions. And I thought poly meant um, something else, a polymer. So I knew nothing about making computer chips when I started there. Found out later it's polycrystalline silicon, okay? But now you guys know. Polycrystalline silicon. So I put a layer down there. Now, the way we do it with polymumps is that polycrystalline silicon layer will be doped. It'll have something in it that makes it conductive. So a little bit of boron or a little bit of arsenic or something like that. So it adds an electron to the crystalline structure so it makes it conductive. Instead of a semiconductor, it becomes a conductor. Okay, so the poly is, is the first layer. It, we don't do much with it. We will pattern it. But it's made to ground things out so you get rid of stray charges. Because if things are charged, they don't move. They stick to each other. Okay, that's one reason for the poly, the first layer of poly. Um, and the other thing is, is when you look at it from the top, this is a side view. So we're looking at it like a cake from the side. But if you look at it from the top, you'd see circuits and things like that. And that will become more obvious later. All right, then our next layer might be, let's pick blue. I like blue for this. Um, maybe a little lighter blue. Okay, so now we're going to put a layer of silicon dioxide, different material. Okay, so the pinkish stuff is polycrystalline silicon, the blue stuff is silicon dioxide. So silicon dioxide is an insulator, it doesn't conduct electricity. Okay, so if I want to um, if I want to isolate this layer from something up here, 
I need an insulator in between so it doesn't short out. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. All right, so we got poly. We got um, SiO2 or silicon dioxide. That's an insulator. And now we're going to put another layer of poly down. Okay. But before we do that, let's do something else. Hmm. I want to make a connection. So I want to connect something up here to this layer down here. What do I got to do? I got this stuff in the way. What do I have to do? Speak up. Yeah, I got to make a hole, right? Got to drill a hole in here somewhere. So I got my little eraser button. I got to find it. Where's my eraser? Can't find it. Well, we can do it another way. You can just color it black. So, I got to make a hole to connect the two. Okay, now if I put polycrystalline silicon down, it'll fill this hole, won't it? So the way we, we deposit polycrystalline silicon is we do something called chemical vapor deposition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we deposit another layer of poly, but we made a hole somewhere. Okay? So we connected um, this layer of poly to this layer of poly. We connected it both electrically, right? Electrically, the electrons can now flow. And we connected it physically. Right? We anchored it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes this hole we make is called an anchor. Depends if you're a mechanical engineer. If you're an electrical engineer, you call it a via, because you're connecting two, two circuits together. Sometimes it's contact, but usually it's vias. So it's like, well, that's pretty cool. So I just connected one polycrystalline silicon layer to another. So you say, so what? Well, I can pattern this thing. We didn't talk about patterning yet, so let's pick a new color. Uh, we'll make the photo resist bright red. Let's see if that works. So we throw some photo resist on here, and if you took intro to MEMS, you know, you've done some patterning, so we put photo resist on it. Then we make a pattern and, um, and etch some holes in it if we want to. So if we put a pattern on it and get rid of the photoresist where we don't want it. Okay. We're left with this photoresist here. Right, this little piece here. It's the same color as my laser pointer. Not this. Right, so this here is photoresist. Okay. Now I etch. So what shows goes, what's not protected, I, I get rid of. I etch it away. I dissolve it away. That's what etching means. I dissolve it away. Okay, it's not going to dissolve our, um, our silicon dioxide because the etching only dissolves um, polycrystalline silicon. When I'm done etching, i got to get rid of the photoresist, right? So I don't need it anymore. It's not part of the MEMS device. So I dissolve that away with some other chemistry. Ooh, what's that starting to look like? A diving board, eh? Isn't it? A cantilever. It's also known as a cantilever. Okay? And that's the most basic structure. You're actually going to do this on the design software. Maybe today we can get through, through all the buttons to push. So that's a cantilever. But what's the problem with my cantilever? It's stuck. It's not free. It's not free. I got to release it. Let it go free. But it won't float away because I was smart. I anchored it. But I got to get rid of this crap, don't I? Mm -hmm. pardon, pardon my French. I got to get rid of this stuff. So how do I get rid of silicon dioxide? Hydrofluoric acid works pretty good. 
Okay, now they use hydrofluoric vapors, and, and we'll talk about stiction and stuff another time. I don't want to get too detailed today. But, you know, the, the concept is I got to get rid of this stuff. Now, this poly or this uh, silicon dioxide is an insulator. It's also called a sacrificial layer. It's, we're going to sacrifice it. We're going to get rid of it. Right? We're not making a computer chip. We're making a mechanical thing. So the insulating properties we may not really need here. But we do need that space so we can make that diving board. Right? So this diving board can bounce up and down. But right now it's stuck. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to etch this stuff away. Okay, I'm going to put it in hydrofluoric acid, and it starts to dissolve, right? And then it starts to dissolve underneath here like this. Okay, I'm not doing too good. It's not supposed to eat the polycrystalline silicon, only the silicon dioxide. So over time, it, it'll etch underneath this um, diving board and you get rid of all of this blue stuff, this silicon dioxide, or most of it anyway. Okay? Now look, this can move. Okay, so I just made a cantilever. So how do you do that in the design software? Right? Well, you've got to draw what your cantilever looks like from the top down. You got to draw where the hole is. Hopefully your cantilever and hole line up. Right? Okay, and that's really all you need to draw in this first one. Now if you want to actuate it, put a little pad there, you've got to break your polysilicon somehow. So now they're electrically isolated, right? This is separate from this. Okay, if I ground this guy, if I ground it, let's see if I can put some color in here. Make it a little narrower. So if I make, um, I ground this, electrically, right, so we'll use a schematic. That's a ground symbol if you've done any electronics, that's what ground looks like. Okay, and then I put a positive voltage on this thing, on this pad. What happens? Any ideas? I put a positive voltage here, what happens? The cantilever moves. Why? That's right, the cantilever moves. Because of the electrons. Yeah, so this is grounded, remember? This is positive, so we've got positive. Um, here, you can't see what I'm pointing at. This is positive. This is neutral because I grounded it. So what's going to happen is your electrons are going to get attracted to this positive charge. So they're going to start to collect here. See that? Those are my electrons. So electrons, what, um, um, what um, charge is that, positive or negative? negative. So now, now my cantilever starts to become negative. Remember, I forced this to be positive, right? Mm -hmm. So opposites attract? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they say? So this cantilever is going to want to bend down. So it's going to go from here and start to bend down. Then I can turn this off, and then all the electrons go away, don't they? Mm -hmm. Right? So they all go away. And I turned it off. Right? So all of these are gone. is no longer positive. So if this is no longer positive, the electrons repel each other, don't they? They want to run away. Mm -hmm. So they all go back to ground. 
Very cool, right? This is called an electrostatic actuator. You can make motors based on this. Turn the voltage on, turn it off, turn it on, you can get something to move. In this case, you know, you've got the you've got the cantilever moving up and down. But if you put a voltage here and let this thing slide somehow, and I'll teach you how to do that, then you can move this thing back and forth. If you get really fancy, you can make things spin like a motor. I'm sorry, where did you show putting the voltage to make it slide? Well, if you put voltage over here. Okay. Then this will want to move that way. Now, right now, it's glued to the ground. It ain't going anywhere left and right. But if you free it up so it can slide or put it on a spring or something like that, then this can move back and forth. And you can do all of this with just layers. How would you make it slide? Would it still be attached? To the We're going to have a lab where you make sliding joints. Okay. You're going to have pivot joints. You're going to have hubs. You're going to make cantilevers. Okay. But we'll start with cantilevers because that's the easiest. All right? And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to stop this.